Good morning. The inspiration for today's video is the fact that I could not find this subject searching YouTube and I searched extensively and I could not find a video on a dual voltage outlet or receptacle installation. This is a dual voltage outlet. This is 110, 115, 120, 125, whatever you want to call it. And we'll double it to make this either 220, 230, 240, 250, whatever you want to call it. This actually is stamped as 125 volt, 250 volt. So that's what we'll call it. And what also inspired this video is the fact I had a sub panel installed in my authority having jurisdiction came out to inspect my sub panel to sign off on it which he did but we had a discussion about dual voltage outlet and when i showed him the outlet that i was going to be putting in the house he told me i was going to do it incorrectly and i told him i don't think so and he told me yes i was so i did not discuss it any further i needed my sub panel signed off he signed off on it. He went on his way. Uh, I have to say he was very incorrect because what I want to do is in NEC 2017, Article 210.4, Exhibit 210.2. My inspector told me that I needed to get a three-pole circuit breaker. I don't have a three-pole breaker. I tied these together to simulate a three-pole breaker. I needed to run a two conductor with a ground for the 250 volt circuit and I needed to run a two conductor with the ground for the 125 volt circuit. Well, that is incorrect. You get a three conductor cable with a ground. The red and the black will be your two 110 hots. You have your neutral and you have your ground. So on this receptacle, two brass here that are jumpered. The other side, I got a brass for a hot, and here's the silver for the neutral. Two hots will come in here. We'll do a neutral here, and the ground here. And that'll give us 250 on one outlet, and 125 on the other outlet, using a two-pole circuit breaker and a three-conductor with a ground. What prompted me to go with the dual voltage outlet was my home audio gear. I bought new home audio gear and reading the vendor's manual, it said optimum performance was achieved with 250 volts. Well, if you run just 250 volt outlets, it does make it useless for other stuff because you still have a television, maybe CD player, gaming, DAC, stuff that just doesn't run on 250. So doing the dual voltage outlet, every outlet I put in, I can still use for standard 125 volt stuff. Now I've already installed six of these dual voltage outlets. And they've been up and running for about, well, almost two years now. There they are in service right there. This is what it's gonna look like wired up in your house. You're gonna have your two pole circuit breaker. Then you have your ground and your neutral Depending on whether you're in a main panel or a sub panel will determine how you terminate these. If you're in a main standalone panel, these will both go to the neutral bus, which is grounded. If this goes into a sub panel, these will be isolated. The neutral will go to the neutral bus and the grounds will go to a separate ground bar, which is isolated from the neutrals. And then you've got your outlet. So we've got 125 volts on the top, 250 volts on the bottom. Once you get them in and running, let's test them. For the 110 outlet, we'll use this $7 outlet tester. We've got two amber lights, which means the 125 is good. Now we'll test the 250. I don't have a test light for 250, but I made one. My 250 volt test circuit consists of four series parallel light bulbs. And it gives me like 15 ohms. The 125 volt circuit first. Got 122 volts on the meter. Now we're gonna plug into the 250. I have 246 volts on the meter. And that's a good load test. 246 volts with a 13 ohm load. My circuit integrity is good. Boy, those are getting hot. 
Well, I hope this video helps somebody out. Like I say, I could not find this on YouTube anywhere. But anybody that does decide to use a dual voltage outlet, do your voltage drop calculation using the 110, 115, 120, or 125 because your voltage drop is going to be double at 125 what it would be at the 250. I have 90 foot runs and I did my voltage drop calculations using the 125 volt criteria and my percentage drop is 2.4 with the 10 gauge wire. That's another discussion I had with my inspector. He told me I was crazy for running 10 gauge wire. I could use 12. Uh, I'm not going to argue with the math. I ran nine 90 foot runs in that attic and I wanted to make sure I did it right the first time. Before I did this wiring job, my family room lights and my bathroom lights dimmed with the base. And guess what? I don't have that problem anymore. I got 10 gauge wire guaranteed to give me 20 amps continuous service at the outlet, even at 125 volts. Do the math, trust the math, but do it at 125 volt service and it'll come out perfect. Well, hey, thanks for watching. All the dangerous stuff is done. So it's time to say cheers with an icy cold gin and tonic. Ah, just remember these two things. There's two types of electrical technicians. Those that have been shocked and those that have not been shocked yet. And the first step to failure is trying. Cheers, take care, thanks for watching, have a great weekend. Later. Ah.